Hey everybody, this is Rado and we're back to Day of the Tentacle Remaster. So last time we finished the game, so let's start by looking at the concept art that we've unlocked. Uh, now, can I zoom in on the concept art? Um, no. So, that's kind of a shame. Uh, if they're not going to in games allow you to zoom in on the picture and and see it as best as possible they might as well just give the concept art as an unlockable thing that's in the the install folder and that may very well be the case I have no way of checking that but it kind of sucks to be limited here there's a hundred and fifty six concept art things here and I would guess by the quality that's being drawn here that this is not concept art from the past but then that one's dated 1992 and that does seem like well that that does seem like it is from the game originally hmm so the concept art <laughs> was it was better than the sprites uh, the original Day of the Tentacle is such an old game, I wouldn't be surprised if it was animated using graph paper and grid paper uh, just because every pixel needed to be planned out and thought through. Uh, but they did draw it and they colored it, which is kind of surprising too. But none of this art is the remaster stuff. That all was done much later. Hmm. And it doesn't seem like an incredible amount of things even changed. Here's a picture that changed. They had a unicorn there and then they changed it to a uh, muscle man. Hmm. For a joke. Which little things like that will change. Certainly. Let's see. Anything else? striking me as being different every single room has been drawn obviously that would be how it, how you'd have to do it otherwise you wouldn't make much progress I'm surprised we never actually washed that card that says wash me most video games these days wouldn't have an obvious hint like that and it not actually be a hint uh, I could see players sitting there trying over and over different ways to wash the car in modern time and uh, and failing over and over again until they saw the carriage in the past and washed it instead. Hmm. Let's see, is there anything worth noting here that's different? Mm, no, it's almost exactly what they originally planned. That's not super surprising. That the flagpole is different there. It, it was just a gold ball at the top of the flagpole in the final game. Mm, the house looks a little different. The tree may be a little different. Uh, let's see. Nothing there changed. Nothing changed there. Nothing really there changed. Hmm. But then we're getting into the intro that we see for just a few seconds as we begin. And how much effort was spent on that intro. It was fully like a TV intro to the game. And they're, they're writing it. They're describing it they're, uh, now they're focusing on the diamond and now they're focusing on the time travel cutscene here's different horse faces they were thinking about Dif different faces for the other characters uh, it's a little surprising that they have so many pictures for the outside and it's not until 132 of 156 that you start to see characters in this game. Uh, the IRS characters, I will say, they didn't have a lot of 
reason to even exist in this game. It doesn't make much sense uh, for the IRS to show up at the point that they do show up. And it is just an extra puzzle in the game that probably didn't need an extra puzzle. And even if it did need an extra puzzle, it, it didn't get explained well. And here's the box art there. Trying and then Dr. Fred and his responses and what house is this? Hmm. And yeah, I don't know what this house is supposed to be a reference to. Hmm. And then here is a reference to Star Wars, of course, and. Hmm. Maybe Doctor Who a little bit, but mostly it's probably just a direct reference to Star Wars as poster. And that's all the uh, all the concept art. Or not super interesting, but cool to have. It's something you wouldn't have before. So we're gonna try to play it with the director's commentary. Classic audio, classic classic uh, sound effects and the bar which uh, I could have had the bar in uh, new FX too but we may show that but let's start here and start listening to the developers commentary this is definitely gonna be speed run we just ran through the game once it shouldn't take us that long to run through the game a second time now that we know everything happening here so, do we already introduce ourselves? Should we do it again for real? Who's gonna start? Peter. This is Tim Schafer. I'm Peter Chan, and I'm uh, the lead artist. He drew that pa painting right there. Right? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes. Of course. Okay. This I'm is Larry Ahern, lead animator. The new graphics that you they're probably movie. talking and about. I think that was a Leela scene. Oh, okay. She's the animal killer. <laughs> I like the mustache tree. Isn't that a lot of shot, Peter? I'm Tim Schaefer, co-project leader of this uh, lovely game. And I am Dave Grossman, other project leader and designer and writer, along with Tim, of this lovely game. That should have been our titles, Co and Other. Co and Other, yeah. yeah. Clint Bajakian, one of the composers. Peter McConnell, one of the composers. This is a lot of people nice. in the room Success. to do it. The game has begun, you guys. Okay, so we saw the lovely, what was the name of that classical music that plays during the opening Ros voice? Rossini, uh, William Tell Overture. It's the quiet part of the William Tell Overture. There's two classical pieces that mean mourning in cartoons. Yes, there's that one and then there's... And the other one is... Uh, da, 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 that's from... Where is that from? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> it might be Pierre Gint or something like that. That's a good guess. It's not another place in the Rossini, is it? No, no, I think it's Pierre Gint. I think, I think. But for that opening scene with the music, we actually got the score and, and, yeah. and sequenced the, the ink into the uh, MIDI sequencer. Mm -hmm. That was one of the big panning sequences, like wide pieces of art for the game. Pan oh, the room over. shot? It was a double room? <laughs> And I noticed there's a poster with an L from Laverne and Shirley on that poster back there. <laughs> Here's one of our giant animation scenes. How did you lip sync back then? Because we didn't have any like tool. Nowadays we use a tool for lip syncing. Do you just by hand? I think get a we just like... timed it out like the old fashioned timing sheets. Now that was for the cinematics, but for in-game, no wasn't it, in Eric the new version. I thought it just blah, 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 chatter. I think the in-game was just on off with audio on off. Yeah, there's there's no actual lip syncing for yeah. the, the majority of the game, so which just, is funny since I have gotten many compliments on the lip syncing for this game over <laughs> huh. the years. Because, you know, it loops around and every percentage of the time it's on, right? Well, because I remember Eric. Yeah, I think Eric designed a, a, some kind of an algorithm for making the, the lips move to the, vol the level of volume. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it, yeah, if of the waveform. Of the waveform. Wave wave it stops yeah. moving the lips. Yeah. That's true. Hmm. Interesting. So the lips just move based on whatever audio is playing. That's a cool idea. I'm sure there's better ways to do it these days. Now these credits were done by Kyle Balda. That's You're right. You're saying entirely on his internship? Yep. So wait, do we not pay for these he, credits? Uh... Or did we pay for them? Time. He got paid, right? I think so, yeah. He took time. This is Peter, the other Peter. Um, 
we took time uh, out of CalArts. He came and uh, spent some time with us and we gave him this intro as an internship and he did a, a fabulous job. It seems like a wow. funny thing to do, like, uh, hey, you're an intern, you've never done this before. Do you want to do the entire animated <laughs> intro, the most- But I remember <laughs> when uh, he did, you know, when he finished something and shared it with us, we were all blown away by it. Yeah. It was awesome. The most iconic <laughs> signature piece. Can you yeah. Hurry That's and not how internships are supposed to work. For the look of our it's game. supposed to be 100% for the interns learning, I would not later learn for the that benefit that the perfect, of the company. This was the perfect piece. You're not to have supposed Kyle to do work, work on, that uh, should he be in paid blind, employment. I didn't know that. I, I, I saw him working on something else. It's kind of ridiculous here. They're they're talking decades later. Did we pay this guy? Darren B. Building. It's like you should know if the guy got paid. People are just kind of, have you noticed everything he does? The reds don't make sense or whatever. I couldn't remember what it was. Oh, the cow. I always get really happy watching these credits. I like the stretchy cow neck. That cow should have showed up again later somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, they're right about that. Ah, missed opportunity. What if the cow had come on their journey with them? Everything would have been so different. Well, here's you know? the story explanation right now for why the cow doesn't come. Because he's just tired. <laughs> make like I've been to the help. mansion before. I guess there's room now, to make a story about the cow. this is the first fight I had with Peter the, McConnell. Uh, you remember cow. this, Peter? Yes. I, I was going to story about the cow. You were going to remember it. Because the opening cutscene was too long, and we, and we always had a problem with too long opening cutscenes. And so we were like, let's split it in half and put an interactive sequence. So there's an interactive sequence that's about to start. But I seem to remember it was the wrong time of day for you, because it's nighttime outside. It started in the daytime with the mutation scene, then it became nighttime. Right. But then what happened, that, then it turned into daytime at the end. That's what bothered you, because the music couldn't make that transition in your mind. Yeah, I, I, well, I think mostly I was I was crabby because, because you know, we had to, the, the, the cutscenes and the interactivity required a bunch of programming in iMuse. And I'd finished. So now the the thing pauses as it tells me the controls thing. Finished it one way, <laughs> <laughs> and and then you changed it to another. And so I think I came up with some sort of artistic argument that <laughs> had had to do with daylight like that. And and uh, but but that was an important thing to learn running a project to not change the after someone spent hours and hours making something. Well, it was also an important to thing to learn that. not to step way out of your bailiwick and tell the the guy who's writing the scene how to write the scene. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, there are bailiwicks all over the place in this game. <laughs> so I wonder if they're just going to talk forever. For a second there, I thought they might. So this is, by the way, what the game looks like on the new graphics if you don't have the option of the dial input. So you can certainly still have the old style, at least to a certain extent, going on. But... I don't know why you would. I think it really should be go full screen, let it zoom out a little bit if you're going to turn off the textual input. Also, I guess I could come over here in the same way and change the verbs from bar to dial manually. And then we'll have a full zoom here with these new graphics that I don't believe existed in the first game. Right. But we need to see what triggers any more de developers commentary. Aha! A secret passage. This is all too easy. So you have this whole one puzzle room and then Laverne, you're kind of how'd back you to get upstairs? Cutscene. Am I upstairs? So I got lost. Laverne, seen any this tentacles? Is either the first What's or the second tentacle? time they've said her name. Oh, just something I and whipped up in my spare time. Again made good pets till the end of the whole game. Until one of them so tried spent, to take over I the world. I missed what her name was, and, and I missed what Hoagie's name mother's was. Up in the basement. And good thing you told spent us that. the whole that. game not Yeah, Bernard wanted us to set them free. They Thank are God names. you weren't that stupid. Did you say Bernard? Okay, you're free to go. Thanks, Bernard. 
Yes, thank you, naive human. Now I can finish taking over the world. <laughs> Wait! Oh, yeah. Now I remember. He's incredibly evil, isn't he? Uh, I'll try to talk him out of it. Well, what possible harm could one insane mutant tentacle do? Leaping lab rats! Dr. Fred! What have you done this time, you meddling milk test? Now Purple Tentacle is free to use his evil mutant powers to take over the world and enslave all humanity! Whoops! Our only hope now is to turn off my sludge magic machine and prevent the toxic mutagen from entering the river! Isn't it a little late for that, Doctor? Of course! That's why I'll have to do it! Yesterday! So when's the next the time machine? commentary gonna start? This is all your fault, Bernard. Behold, children! The Chronogon! Well, only Doc, start can't you just send Bernard? No, you must all go to or increase will the, the odds do they that have one of you will make it say. there alive! Have any people ever been it hurt in this thing? random times? Of course not! This is the first time I've ever tried it on people! Uh, these old graphics, boy, they they don't hold up. It looks bad. They didn't look good when they first came out, to be honest, but uh, they were the best you could get back Well, then. I'll be! But, and then there's the porta potties uh, vessels. Chronojohns. Yep. Chronojohns. Chronojohns. This, by the way, is an amazing full-screen animation before it was possible to do full-screen yeah. And not actually animated, That's all. the background's all color cycling. It's all color cycling. A lost art in the world of... Uh, I forgot about graphics. that. Now yeah. that computers work like they should, you don't have to do that stuff anymore. You know, if you look at Mark Ferrari's website, not that Mark Ferrari worked on this game, but he was the master of color cycling, and he has a whole website where he's done it in a more high-end way. Like, like with high, higher res color cycling, he, get, he just kept perfecting that to higher and higher resolutions. Yeah, that stuff was crazy. He was into it, and then I think Bill Eakin was the one that inherited the mantle from him when he left. All the lava in Indy 4. Yeah. So that was a weird conversation. Awesome. Yeah, so that was like two, three frame animations. A little surf music for Hoagie. We always yeah. had a place for surf music in our games. That the totally. bone wagon theme. Yep. That's right. I think that was. I think that surf music was yours. That was mine. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did that last little sequence here. Yeah, you know the the, the uh, musically. This I believe was the last project that we all worked on. To, certainly the last original title that we all worked on together, sort of equally as composers, where there was no lead composer and we all pretty You're much. Right panicked and freaked out together. Order jewels. What happened to Hokey and Laverne? I knew I should have bought a real diamond. Are they alive? My <laughs> dials say that the Are largest specimen landed 200 years in the past, and the other is stuck 200 years in the future. Well, hurry up and bring them back. I will! As soon as I get a new diamond, then all your buddies have to do is plug in their respective chronogons and... Plug them in? Where is Hoagie going to find an electrical outlet 200 years in the past? Yes, well, he'll be needing my patented super battery then, won't he? Now, where did I put those patented super battery plans of mine? Plans? How are we going to get Hoagie plans? Don't worry me with details, boy. Just help me find the plans. They're in this house somewhere. Now what am I going to do? I think I made myself perfectly clear. Step one, find plans. Step two, save world. Step three, get out of my house. Let's get cracking. Suppose that's what we do eventually do. So press down on the D-pad to play the commentary. 
That's interesting. Okay, am I right, or is this this is finally the game starting? Like the game, all of that was intro. Right, oh all God. that was intro. The game has now finally begun. <laughs> and then as soon as you walk off screen, we freeze again for another cutscene. Ah, okay, now we're playing. So the original, original cutscene was like seven minutes before we and Before we added that brief, <laughs> brief, tiny introduction to... That's we always were wrestling with that, I felt, in adventure games. Like, you want to tell the story and set it up for, you know, the intro, but if we, then, we, then you think of another, you know, before the intro, we should do this other little intro, and then you'd end up with all these, like, intros to the intros to the intros, mm -hmm. and they get super long. I feel like that's just because we were inexperienced writers. <laughs> No, I think some people no, like I, that. Some people like that you set the whole stage and then they're interactive, and some people are just clicking and they want to get to it. Right. Yeah, but th we never respected those people, to be honest. We just click <laughs> to get through it. The reality is, you guys had a story to tell, and, exactly. and that's the way to set it up and get people invested in it, so that when they actually get into the interactive part, they feel invested. And were these cutscenes escapable back then? Did we? Yes. Yes. Well, yes. You'd be so confused if you just started this game. And... Right. And I do feel like we're, we're, we're asking the player to play a, a part in this story, and it's mean to make them wait so long before they can. True, but at least mm. they're being entertained. But That's of course true. it's a classic. Full of mistakes, but a classic. <laughs> That's true too. But even something like Skyrim, which I'm playing right now, that takes forever to actually let you play the game. So, this is going to be it for this recording, and so we will start right here and start overriding it. At 2% we are here. So, we're going to... You can get the commentary. You probably can okay, just right, get it. Okay, am I right? Or is this this is here, and then press down on the D-pad to stop it again. So hopefully it prompts me each time. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to play a little bit, and every time I enter a new room, I'm gonna have to see if there's a commentary part uh, in the game. But we're gonna try and race through the game since we know what to do, mostly. Also, there is the fact that I can't really move or talk or, or do anything while people are talking in the commentary, too. So a lot of this is just going to be me sitting here scratching my behind as it is. Uh, anywho, that's it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment if you want to, and watch every second of my videos. All of that helps me out. If you want to support me further, you can go to my main YouTube page. On the right is the blue button that says support this channel. Click it, make a donation. And if you want a friend or follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.